Welcome back to another episode of College Hockey Talk. We are here today with current sophomore of the Penn State men's hockey team, Connor McMenamin. Connor, thank you so much for coming on the podcast, and how are you doing today? I'm good, yeah. Thank you for having me. And the first question I have to ask you is, obviously, it's been odd with COVID-19 going around, but what's it been like to prepare for this upcoming season, and what challenges have you faced trying to do so? Um, yeah, it's definitely been a little bit different. Um, obviously, you know, watching out for everyone's safety and uh, trying to get around to working out. But uh, I've had a little bit of a weird summer. Um, I had postseason surgery uh, to help repair my hip labrum. Um, so I was actually up at school for a while, uh, rehab, and I just came home a couple weeks ago. And um, our gym back home has been open, thankfully. Um, we work out in small groups at 10.30, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, and then Tuesday, Thursday, ice for us where we go out and uh, usually start out with a bit of uh, skating and then uh, finish off with some skills. So it's been nice to be back and, and getting back in the swing of things. Is the hip doing well? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, it was just one of those things that had been bothering me for a little while now, so. Um, it was good to get it fixed, and it's feeling better than ever. So, Well, that's good to hear. And what are some of your goals for this upcoming season, not only for you, but for your team as well? Yeah. Um, you know, we have a bit of a different team this year. We're going to be young, but um, our freshman class coming in, they're unbelievably talented. Um, we have good leadership on the back end um, and all of our returners. So um, I think is our goal this year is just to, you know, somewhat finish – finish off where we left last year. I think we have the team to do it. Um, you know, I think if you, if your goal isn't to win a national championship from the beginning of the season, you're already selling yourself short. So, um, yeah, like I said, I, I think we're just looking forward to a season and seeing how, how we can mesh early here. Now, growing up, how did you start playing hockey? Um, this is a good story, actually. My, I, I did everything my older brother, uh, Colton wanted to do and um he one day said you know I want to I want to skate so we he started skating at like local skates and um you know obviously I wanted to do what he did so I started going and he was like seven at the time and I was only three and a half and from there he got into ice hockey and I did too just because I wanted to be like him and um the rest was just kind of history just kind of continued from there and did you have a favorite player growing up I did. Uh, Danny Briere. Oh, wow. By far my favorite player. I love the Flyers growing up, obviously, from Collegeville, Philly area. Um, yeah, I, I love Danny Briere. He was, he was my go-to guy. Yeah, I was a huge Mike Richards fan back in the day. He was – I don't know what happened to him, but he was very, very good. Yeah, yeah. Now, before Penn State, you played in the USHL for the Tri-City Storm and the Sioux City Musketeers. What was it like uh, to play in the USHL? Oh, it was good. It's definitely um, a league that uh, you grow up in pretty fast. I came right from U16 at Shattuck, and, you know, the, you get up into the USHL, and it's, the speed is different. The guys are older, you know, more mature, more physical. Um, so it was definitely an adjustment, but I got, I got pretty lucky. Um, our Sioux City team was incredible. Um, we had a couple of draft picks off that team. Uh, just guys to look up to for your first year that – you know, you, you know, some teams might not have had, but um, it was it was pretty special. And then we also had uh, some good teams in Tri City uh, when I was there, especially our second year. We had a an uh, Anderson Cup, uh, sold ourselves short in the playoffs, but um, pretty special team nonetheless to be a part of. And what was the difference, in your opinion, between your play at Sioux City and at Tri City? Um, I think the coaches were just a little bit different. Um, some of the systems we have were definitely the same. I actually had uh, our assistant coach in Sioux City, Ethan Goldberg. He came over to Tri-City when I got traded there. So there was some familiarity there in, in the way we did things, like our penalty kill. But um, Jay Verity is an, an incredible coach. I had him in Sioux City. Um, he's obviously with Tucson now in the A. Um, he's more of a running gun, physical kind of guy. I think he holds the record for penalty minutes in the USHL. Um, so that's kind of his style of play. And then our other coach was more, um, you know, systematic, um, big into our systems and how we should play and um, a lot of positive reinforcement for him. So there's just a, just two a little bit different playing styles, but both worked and both were unbelievable, you know, mentors and coaches for sure. 
Now, what did you do during your time in the UCHL that improved your game in college? Um, I would definitely say uh, defense. Um, I think when you play U16 and uh, kind of like the minor hockey, you can get away with a lot of stuff, um, a lot of habits that don't work at the upper levels. And I think as soon as you get to the USHL, you learn very fast that, you know, you make one mistake and uh, it's most likely in the back of your net or a scoring chance against. So I think just being a 200 foot player um, was definitely my biggest thing uh, to adjust to. Now, like you mentioned earlier, you got to also play for Shattuck St. Mary's. How did you get the opportunity to play there and what was that like? Um, yeah, so I played minor hockey back here for the Junior Flyers. And um, I think one day my parents got a phone call from Ben Umefer, Um Just, you know, said that uh, they had been watching me and liked me and wanted me to come out for a visit. And I went out um, sometime in February and just uh, skated with the team, did like a little scrimmage, a little tryout, and they – you know, said that we think you could fit in here. And um, I don't know, I, you can call it offered a spot, whatever, um, but said, you know, apply to school and go through the process. So um, I was pretty fortunate. Uh, I went through it with my best friend, uh, Josh Maniscalco. He plays at Arizona State right now. He, uh, he went out before me um, and then I got a call too. So it was pretty cool uh, that we, you know, we grew up playing hockey together since we were four years old. So. Uh, for us to both go out there is really special. Yeah, and what was it like to play for a school that Sidney Crosby used to play in, other former NHLers and current NHLers played in, and being part of that history, how how does it feel to be a part of that? Uh, yeah, obviously, like you said, it's super special. Um, you know, going to a place like that is a very prestigious school. Um, you know, I think you just try and add on to the tradition as much as possible, and, um, you know, I don't think – you're going to replace the big names up there like Sidney Crosby. Sorry, still there. Um, yeah. Like Sidney, uh, you know, Nathan McKinnon, guys like that, Jonathan Taze, Zach Parise. But um, it was really special. Um, the culture. Uh, we had guys, you know, like the year right above us, Clayton Keller played there. Uh, he's in the NHL now. So it was, it was cool. It was just like a very humbling, cool experience to be a part of. And you, you definitely learn that. Um, there's a lot of players that are a lot better than you and, you know, you always have room to work. And I want to talk about your recruiting process and what made you want to go to Penn State? Um, you know, I'm from the, the Philly area and um, as I was, you know, looking around at schools, um, I've been talking to Penn State for a while and they had offered me a, a spot on the team and I think it was just for me, it was a no brainer. I'd been away from home since I was 14 at Shattuck and then juniors. And um, I think this just gave me a chance to, you know, come home essentially and play for uh, a newer school and, and help build a program. And I mean, what the, the people before us that have played for Penn State have already done with the program is, you know, truly incredible. And um, I think just to go and play for that school, you know, in my home state, have my family be able to, you know, come see games every weekend. It, it's, it was a, a no brainer. Now talk about the coaching staff and what's it like to play under them? Uh, the coaching staff is incredible. Um, Guy Godowski is, is so positive. Um, he is just one of the best coaches I've ever had. Um, and the assistants, Matt Lindsay and, and Keith Fisher, they do an incredible job of um, keeping, you know, everyone intact in and, practices and stuff like that and I don't, I don't really know how to describe it they're just they work so well together as a team and they help you know they care about the players they're they're so for the team and, and for the individual and it's just it's really special because you know it helps you it gives you confidence to play your game and play within the system and they give everyone you know chances so it's it's really fun to play for them. Now, what was the biggest adjustment you had to make to college hockey? Was it the mental side of the game, trying to make quicker decisions, or was it the physicality playing against guys that are a lot older than you were? Uh, I think it's a little bit of both. Um, I think when you make that jump to juniors, you realize it's a little bit faster, but then when you go to college too, it's especially faster. Um, guys are even older, even stronger in college. So I think that the speed aspect is, you know, you adjust to it pretty quickly, but um, the mental aspect of making the right play or the smart play compared to the risky play. Like it's, 
it's quicker in the NCAA for sure. Um, I think that was probably one of the hardest things to adjust to. Now, Penn State is known to have one of the best student sections in college hockey. What's it like to play in that environment, and what's the best chant you've heard from the student section? Um, yeah, uh, the Roar Zone, our, our student section, is, is pretty incredible. They do unbelievable work. They make our atmosphere and our rink what it is and what it's known for. Um, I think, you know, the first time you come out onto the ice at Penn State, and you see them over the opposing goalie just – mountain high like it, it's chilling like it's pretty special um best chant um i don't really call it i don't know if it's like a chant but after every game i think my favorite part of the roar zone is um we sing the our school alma mater together um we all line up on the blue line and we sing it with our student section i think that's pretty special um you know and they they love it they make signs the signs every game are are incredible um, just the work that they put in just to, you know, give us a slight advantage over, you know, an opposing team. It's it's unbelievable. Now you scored your first collegiate goal against Minnesota. Describe that moment and who did you call first? <laughs> um, yeah, it was it was pretty uh, weird. We were on a, a power play. I think we were up um, 6-2 at the time. And uh, our coach just kind of threw out our freshman line uh, towards the end of the game and we just want to face off and uh, our defenseman, Chris Malari, you know, got a puck through their first guy and I just tried to get a stick on it. I did. And I looked back, I saw it hit the post and I didn't, I didn't see it go in, but um, I saw uh, our, my teammate Kevin Wall celebrate. So I, you know, obviously got excited, but yeah, it was pretty special. Um, Who did I call first, man? Um, I think I called my mom first, I'd say. Um, I think all she said to me was really a tip or something like that, just joking with me, but it was pretty funny. Now, how do you balance academics while playing Division One college hockey? Um, it's definitely a challenge. I think it's something as a freshman you got to get used to, but um, I don't, I'm sure it's this similar to, at almost every other school, but you know, our Penn State does a really good job of um, providing us with any academic service that we need. Um, and we have a, a whole facility dedicated just to athletes where we can go and, and do our schoolwork and, you know, study hall hours and all that stuff. So um, they make it easy for on the time management side, just for, you know, setting aside time for us to go get our stuff done and uh, studying. Also at our rink, we have, um, you know, a study room that, you know, has everything you need in it and guys go in there and, and utilize it pretty well. So um, I think that's a big, big part of our team culture too, is our academics. So um you know, it's obviously everyone tries really hard and then we try and stay up there in the GPA. Now, what was your favorite game this past season that you played in? Um, uh, favorite game, probably Michigan. Uh, our Saturday night game against Michigan, we beat them. It was the first time our senior class had won at Yoast, um, which was really cool for, for them and obviously a special moment for our team. But uh, Michigan's Michigan also, you know, they, they have a good atmosphere there. Their student sections are – are rowdy they're right on top of you on the bench so I think just playing in that um, historic rink and um, experiencing that atmosphere there that was pretty special and then obviously getting a win on top of it that was really cool. Now talking about playing at Yost what's your favorite road arena to play in in the Big Ten? Favorite road arena um, I mean they're all they're all incredible buildings but uh, I'd probably have to say Yost there that's Michigan's pretty pretty cool place to play. Now, obviously, the season got canceled before you guys played in the Big Ten tournament. Where did you find out, and what was the reaction amongst your teammates? Um, yeah, I mean, it was a tough time, obviously, with the circumstances. Um, you know, everyone was sad. We were, we were all disappointed. But I think everyone especially felt for our seniors. I'm sure, you know, it was the same way around the, around the college hockey world. But um, just a, a tough moment. I, I don't think that's how anyone wants their season to end. Um, but like I said, with the circumstances, sometimes that's all you can, can only control what you can control. So, um, it was sad, but yeah. Now we're getting to the segment I call the non-hockey questions where I ask you some non-hockey questions. And my first question is what's your favorite sport to watch at Penn state that is not hockey? Uh, I'd have to say either wrestling or women's volleyball. They're uh, pretty electric atmospheres there. Now, have you been to the whiteout game at Penn State against Michigan for football? I have. It was uh, my first one this year. 
Um, I don't think there is ever an atmosphere in college football quite like that. Um, I mean, it's just – it's it's incredible the what the students do. And, you know, you think of our student section and our, our rink compared to that, and it's just a little sliver of, of Beaver Stadium. But, yeah, that game was, was also chilling. You're not even playing in it, but you have chills as they come out on the field. So it was pretty special. Was that the loudest building you've ever been in? Ever, by far. Now, my next question is, if you can make an appearance on any TV show, what would it be? Any TV show? Um, ooh, probably Prison Break. <laughs> uh, that was uh, – I binge-watched that show in high school, uh, and I've rewatched it uh, probably two or three times. I, I don't know why, but something about Michael Schofield and how smart he is, like I, I think it would be pretty cool to play a character like that. Now, what would what would your character be? Would you be like one of his sidekicks for the prison break? Yeah, I mean, I I I'd like to uh, probably be one of the smart guys and helping him out. But uh, yeah, I don't know, maybe a sidekick, maybe a third brother um, between him and uh, him and his brother. So yeah, we'd see probably one of those. Now, what's your favorite cereal? Uh, favorite cereal, Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Nice, that's the best answer. Yeah. Um, I don't think now, what sporting event would you love to attend someday? What sporting event? Yeah, like the Super Bowl or something like that. Um, Monaco and Formula One racing. Oh, wow. Um, have you ever been to a race before? I've never been to a race, but there's a series out on Netflix, uh, Drive to Survive, new one that came out. Um, I absolutely binge watched that with one of my teammates, and we are all in on Formula One now. Like, we love it, so. I think going to Monaco would be, would be pretty special. Do you like Lewis Hamilton? Because he was my favorite Formula One driver from that show. Yeah, Lewis Hamilton. Um, we liked uh, Daniel Ricciardo. He was probably our favorite. Um, we also liked uh, Verstappen. He's, he's a new and up-and-coming guy. So Now, um, what music do you listen to before a game? Um. It kind of depends. Um, I mean, sometimes, you know, if I feel like I need to focus up a bit more, I'll probably get into some, some hip hop or rap. Um, but if, you know, I'm feeling loose, I'm feeling good. And, you know, I want to keep that, that same mood. I'll probably listen to some EDM or some uh, mixes on SoundCloud or something like that. Now, which road arena or Penn state matter has the best warm up mix? Uh, I mean, we had a pretty good warm up mix this year. Um, Obviously, we put it together, but best one on the road. Uh, I think Michigan State had a pretty good one this year. Now, who is the funniest on Penn State? Funniest on Penn State. I hate to admit it, but uh, Adam Pillowix, um, <laughs> one of my good buddies on the team. But um, one of those guys, he kind of knows he's funny, but, like, you don't want him to know that he's funny. But he's, he's definitely the funniest on our team. Now, bringing back to some hockey questions now, what advice would you give younger players pursuing Division One college hockey? Uh, my biggest advice, I'd say, is take your time. Um, I think, you know, you see a lot of kids. I know they changed the rule recently, but trying to commit when they're Bantams, you know, Bantam minors, Bantam majors, is early, like 14 years old. Like, take your time. Like, go visit all the schools, see what you like. I mean, it's hard to pick what school you, you know, you, you think you want to go to when you're 14 years old. And, um, it's never a rush either. Like I think the average age for a college freshman is, is 19 or, or 20 years old. So um, it's never a rush. Like I would, like I said, just, just take your time and, and see all, see out all your options. Now, what has been your favorite hockey memory thus far? Um, this far, probably winning uh, the big 10 regular season this year. I know we were, we were all together uh, watching, I think it was Michigan and Minnesota and we needed Michigan to win. We were in a, a race with Minnesota and we were, you know, all sitting around the TV watching. And I think it was the first time we ever cheered for Michigan when they scored in the shootout. But um, that was a pretty special moment. Just, you know, uh, never been really a part of something like that. So that was, that was definitely special. Now, do you have any shout outs you'd like to make before we let you go? Any shout outs? Uh, it's one of my best pal, Connor McEachern's 21st birthday today. So I'll give him a shout out. Nice. Well, happy birthday to him. And thank you so much, Connor, for coming on the podcast. I wish you and your team the best in the future. And I hope to see your team in person very soon. Yep. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it.